Now introducing Captain Chiropractic. <laughs> hey kids. If you yeah. want to make your spine pain go away, you better pay attention. <laughs> no, Captain Chiropractic. <coughs> We're talking part five of the hip hinge. And ironically, it's about the shoulder. <laughs> so step four, we were talking about the posterior chain muscles. So the shoulder has a lot to do with what the hip is doing. It's kind of mirrored. So we talked about the hip having a lot of musculature here, which is usually tight pulling us into this position. It's the opposite in the shoulder. We usually dominate in the chest, pulling our chest in. The mid back is usually rounded and weak, especially upper neck, pulling the head into extension. Part six is gonna be more about the neck and what we call the suboccipital region which plays a big part in this as well. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the neck and the shoulder and how they work together. So usually, internal rotation is the problem with the shoulder, or the hip, it was external rotation. So the classic exercise here is the YTWL. We're gonna show it with the TheraBand, and the big mistake we see with this is people just doing it, going back into that extension problem, not to beat the dead horse, but that's the big problem is there. We're not actually using the shoulders, we're using the spine. So we need to lock in the hip hinge, lock in the posterior chain muscles, isolate the shoulder. And that's really gonna hit the external rotators of the shoulder, especially the rotator cup, to bring balance. And the whole thing we're gonna do in a lengthened neck posture. So we'll start, we're gonna fill out of the way here. You're gonna free show for coming in late. <laughs> so, all the steps, hit them in here, I'm just doing fast, feet, Load the hamstrings, measuring stick hands, <coughs> pushing that belly button in. Chest is high now, and as I press my head back, ear, shoulder, hip, poster chain is firing. So like I did the founder, we're gonna get in that same position. I'm gonna come into a founder, I'm hip hinging, squeezing those hips in, and the first step is Y, pulling up over the head as I get deeper into the hinge. Now the whole goal is, if you can get your arms behind your ear, you're probably warping at the spine somewhere. Either your head's going back, or you're deepening here. You've lost the engagement of the posterior chain. So you want to feel like you're hitting a wall. You'll hit like this shaky point. And that's when you're isolating just the shoulder. So let's do that again. That was the Y. We're going to the T now. So hinging in as I get deeper. The only thing that are moving are the shoulders and the hips. Working together. W and L. Show it from this angle. Engaging. Y. Don't forget to breathe. That little shake, that's good. T. W and L. All those external rotation of the shoulder. I'm gonna add one little bonus one on here because I really like it. This one is to help the rounding. We're gonna lay down. And see, most of our shoulders like to rise, so we're gonna try to limit that. Putting that rounded thoracic curvature right there. I'm pulling the shoulders down, driving my head back. So we're lengthening the distance between shoulder and the back of the head. Usually if you hold this one for two minutes, you'll start shaking pretty crazy. Engaging a lot of here, the neck, and I'm trying to keep this flat. I'm doing all those steps that we already went over, even in a laying position, trying to get the head back. And it should sound funny when you're here. So people say they can't really breathe well here. That's typical. But I want you to try to breathe. Step seven, we're gonna go over breathing in detail. And we're gonna repeat this exercise for step six because it's about the suboccipital region right here, which you're gonna start to feel if you're doing this one. All right. There's a lot more we can do with the shoulders, but there's some examples of how to combine the hip hinge with the shoulder to really make it beneficial. The other thing you'll notice is with walking, and this is really important, I'm gonna add this on, it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video, is don't grab onto the treadmill, it makes me cry. Because then you're locking out your shoulder movement when you're walking. 
your spine's job, how it works, how it gets some strength, is acts as a stabilizing structure. So when you're walking on a treadmill and you're shifting left and right, your spine is fighting. It's stabilizing, trying to bring balance. That's one way it gets strong. So if you're just holding on, your spine's just compressed, it's relaxing. The only thing working is you're burning calories with your legs. You're only working your hips then. So when you combine those two when you're walking, lengthening your stride, you notice the more you hover that leg in the air trying to take a longer stride, that's when the spine really activates because it has to balance and your arms will come into play to help bring you balance. That's that cross crawl, left, right, working when you're walking. So it's really good, that's a natural movement. So you don't want to cut that out by just hanging on and leaning back because this is extension posture, folks. I'm sorry, I see it in the gym all the time. It breaks my heart. So try that just with your walking. Get the hip hinge in, lengthen the stride, try to limit your impact on your heel, because that's hitting that big hip hinging muzzle, the iliopsoas, which atrophies because we wear shoes that walk on flat surfaces all the time. That's one of the big causal factors along with sitting. So where you remove that by lengthening the stride, try to guide that stride a little bit more when we walk, and you'll notice your arms naturally come in. I'll do a little walking demonstration. Go. Shoulders. <laughs> So when we're walking with shoulders, we want to think about sometimes we, when we got the hips engaged, the shoulders need to be engaged as well. And a lot of times the upper trap muscles and everything just pull those shoulders out of being engaged. And especially when we're on treadmills, we're holding on, and only the hips are working, and, and we have this tendency to go forward like we talked about. So to help engage the shoulders with the hips at the same time, you want to think about just pulling those shoulders down a little bit. And that broadens the chest a little bit. And you'll notice when you do that, when you walk, they'll almost like a pendulum, the arms will start swinging more naturally along with the hips. So that's what we call a cross crawl. So when the left leg goes forward, the right leg should join with it. So we're walking, just gradually going there. But if we're lazy with it, you'll notice those shoulders don't move. But if I stack myself, put those in the socket better, when I walk, they automatically swing with you. And you'll get tired a lot faster doing walking that way. And you can definitely exaggerate it when you walk. You can sometimes, if you're really engaged, 10 minutes of walking, you'd be sweating and really tired. It's not the distance you're walking, it's how you're doing it, how you're doing it engaged to strengthen the spine and not rely on resting on the joints.